Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be doing a review of the SU-25K Frogfoot, a currently Tier 6 9.7 BR strike aircraft for the Russian Air Tech Tree. This vehicle currently comes in a pack that includes the SU-25K, 15 days of premium time, and 2,000 Golden Eagles, all for the current price of $59.99 USD. In this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about the Frogfoot, including its stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, I'll give it some key scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I feel that this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. That said, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing but without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as always, to start, I'll place its stats here on the side of the screen. Important stats to know are its turn time, rate of climb, and countermeasure count. However, you can also look at really any of its presets and be amazed by this plane. Now, that being said, for how the Frogfoot plays. In short, this plane is ridiculous. It entered the live servers at 9.3 BR only to have Gaijin change it to 9.7 BR within hours of release. Even still, I could see it increasing once more to 10.0 BR, but of course, we will have to wait and see. Regardless, as it currently stands, the SU-25K Frogfoot is a jack of all trades. While not the fastest plane in-game by any means, it can accelerate very quickly and, with most ordnance loadouts, will still be able to keep a substantial amount of speed, as this plane carries burden very well. In many ways, as you may have been able to tell, the closest thing in-game to the Frogfoot is the A-10 Warthog, though in War Thunder at least, the SU-25K seems to be a much more balanced plane in terms of abilities, trading overall carry weight for a much better flying aircraft, making dogfights possible due to the much better acceleration and better handling on the Frogfoot. In all, however, how you play the SU-25K is, as you can imagine, based on what you decide to carry into battle. If you want to carry two or four extra cannons, along with the R-60 MK missiles and nothing else, you'll be able to dogfight quite effectively. If you want to carry bombs such as the incendiary bombs or the 500 kilogram HE bombs, or even up to 32 100 kilogram bombs, you'll still be able to do so and go after bases. The Frogfoot will allow you to carry four 23 millimeter cannons, two R-60 MK missiles, and four incendiary bombs, which will likely be your most effective heavy multi-role loadout for Air RB, as it allows you to go after bases and destroy a single base with the relatively light incendiary bombs and then go after enemy planes. This, in my experience, is quite effective. Otherwise, in terms of strategy, the Frogfoot works best near sea level, side rushing the enemy rather than attempting a boom and zoom roll, as boom and zoom runs the risk of you being hit by much more agile and faster planes, and will also put you in danger of wing rip in your descent. Now for ground RB, this this is a totally different beast, as your loadout will change from being a cannon and incendiary bomb oriented loadout to HE bombs, rockets, and guided missiles. The Frogfoot has options from the 3kg S5K rockets all the way up through the massive S25 O rockets that weigh 370 kilograms each. Essentially, it's however you want to play, although the Frogfoot relies on laser guided munitions rather than MCLOS or TV guided ordnance, like what might be common common in US and similar tech trees. To this point, the laser designator on the SU-25K is excellent and will allow for you to point at the target, launch your weapon, and then continue on your way, essentially making it a fire and forget weapon at least to a point so long as you don't make any crazy maneuvers. Regardless, when combined with the excellent 30mm cannon that itself can shoot through upwards of 56mm of armor at max, the SU-25K can absolutely dominate close air support, switching in a moment's notice from destroying ground targets to destroying air targets, all while being resistant to ground fire, including up to SPAA missiles. And now with all that out of the way, let's get into its strengths and weaknesses, and for strengths, and there are a lot of them. It has a very strong airframe that can take numerous big hits, including from missiles, and keep flying. It also includes a titanium tub for your pilot, which substantially decreases pilot damage. Second, it has excellent firepower, regardless of your loadout. With the four 23mm cannons attached, the Frogfoot still flies very well and is still quite maneuverable, despite the additional weight. For its third strength, it has very strong flaps that will not threaten to break until you're beyond 800 plus kilometers per hour. Fourth, it has very good acceleration and rate of climb, especially considering the type of plane and that it doesn't have afterburners. 
For its fifth strength, it can carry two R-60 MK missiles, of which are among the best short-range missiles in-game. Beyond this, the Su-25K can carry a tremendous 128 countermeasures. For its seventh strength, it is phenomenal in terms of close air support, allowing you to carry great laser-guided ordnance such as the KH-29L, or rockets, bombs, or even cannons. For its 8th strength, it has a great roll rate. For its 9th strength, it has good maneuverability overall. And finally, it has very good premium RP and SL bonuses. And now for its weaknesses. First, it has no radar, which is kind of a bummer. Second, it has engines that are so powerful that you will need to constantly watch your speed, as your wings will rip at around Mach 0.87, which is attainable on this aircraft with fairly little difficulty. For its third weakness, regardless of how good the engines are, the Frogfoot is still subsonic and lacks afterburners, meaning that you will still be slower than most enemy planes. For its fourth weakness, it has low ammunition caliper cannon with 250 rounds per gun for the 30 and 23 millimeter cannons. For its fifth weakness, it has a relatively low amount of fuel, at least on minimum with around only eight minutes of fuel. And finally, while the R-60 MK missiles are excellent, it can still carry only two of them, which will basically necessitate that you be a good shot with your cannon. And now for how I score this plane. First for dogfighting and air RB, I give it a seven and a half out of 10. While I am tempted to give this plane a slightly higher score, I know that the Frogfoot is limited in several key areas that prevent it from taking the next step into greatness. While it has an excellent selection of ordnance that can assist you greatly in dogfighting, it simply lacks the top speed, total number of missiles, and afterburners to be a consistent player for most people at or around 9.7 BR. This will be especially true if it jumps to 10.0 BR. Regardless, the Frogfoot can still do more than tremendous damage in air RB against enemy planes, as well as in air cover and ground RB. I have had numerous 6 kill games in air RB while working on this video which means that at least in the hands of an experienced player, this plane can be downright destructive, in much the same way that the A-10 early can be, although I feel that, again, the Frogfoot is better in air RB against enemy planes. And now for close air support. I give the Frogfoot an 8.5 out of 10. Now this plane has so many tools at its disposal to destroy enemy players that anyone could simply pick the weapon that they're most comfortable with, be it bombs, rockets, or guided ordnance, and go to town. Between this and its ability to take massive damage, the Su-25K is one of the best close air support planes in-game and can support the Russian ground tech tree through the highest BRs. While it doesn't have the largest payload in-game, it's still pretty damn close. Regardless, with the introduction of the Frogfoot, the Russians now have one of the top two premium close air support planes in-game, at least for now, and one could even argue that the Frogfoot might even be the best close air support plane in-game, at least amongst premiums. Now for overall, I give it an 8 out of 10. The Su-25K is an absolute beast of a plane at 9.7 BR, and can handle air RB and ground RB on nearly equally amazing terms. While it does have its deficiencies such as a low top speed and low ammo count, the Frogfoot can still easily and reliably be the best plane in the match, regardless of game mode. As of writing this script, I maintain over a 70% win rate with the Frogfoot or Grok, and that's all with random players on my team. Make of that what you will, but this plane has numerous times been the deciding factor in the wins that I've had, more so than most other planes can be. Now with all that, that out of the way, let's get into my recommendation. While it is difficult for me to say that a virtual vehicle is worth $60 USD, I can say that the Su-25K Frogfoot is likely the plane in War Thunder that, as of right now, is closest to being worth that cost. This plane can do anything that you ask of it and will do it well. It is extremely forgiving and easy to fly, with a wide range of deadly loadout options that will allow for you to pick out which implements that you want to use in order to dispatch of your enemy. Again, this is not a perfect plane, but it has enough traits and capabilities that make it excellent in many roles. So yes, I do recommend the purchase of this plane and give it my Tank and Stein seal of approval. While I think that it is very good at 9.7 BR, I fear that it will jump at 10.0 BR, which even if it does, I still feel that the Su-25K will likely be well worth the cost. Now with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know what you guys thought about this video and the plane in the comments below. If you would like, please consider subscribing as well as that helps my channel tremendously. Either way, thanks again and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.